All right, so here's the British Medical Journal article. What about vascular risk factors? You heard me proposing that maybe this is why uh, dementia is less common. So those with a blood pressure systolic of 160 and a cholesterol of 6.5 multiplied by 38 and you get the number you used to. So high cholesterol, high blood pressure had a three and a half times chance greater of developing dementia. These were middle-aged people followed for 20 years. So risk of dementia is greater in those with high cholesterol and high blood pressure. And here are people who use beta blockers. Um, so people who use beta blockers, they have less chance of getting dementia. And um, beta blockers for blood pressure. And um, here are people who use ACE inhibitors, ACE uh, receptor blockers, calcium channel blockers, beta blockers, all of them have less chance of getting dementia. So treating blood pressure, less chance uh, of dementia. And this is an uh, interesting study. Um, so um, these are people who were diagnosed with dementia and some of them had their vascular risk factors treated all vascular risk factors treated. Some had some of them treated and some of them had no treatment. So these, this is the 3C study from France. So they all start out with a mini mental of 22. They have bad dementia, they have mild to moderate dementia already. But those who have their vascular risk factors, their mini mental slows down. So if you want a treatment to slow dementia down in people with Alzheimer's disease, this has never been <laughs> done as a prospective study. Um, treat the vascular risk factors. Treat their blood pressure, their cholesterol, and um, any drug that could do this would uh, be approved by the FDA. <laughs> so here you are. And then statins and cognition. Uh, so, and you can see the summary is that uh, statins um, are helpful in um, preventing cognitive decline. And what about vitamin D? Well, vitamin D is what I call the Goldilocks vitamin. Not too much, not too little, just right. Too much is risky. It affects too much, you get too much calcium in your body and that's bad for vascular risk factors. Too little is bad for many reasons. So you need, I don't recommend taking vitamin D as a supplement. I recommend having a blood test to see if your vitamin D is okay. You guys live in Naples, so maybe you have enough sun. Or maybe you're using so, so much sunblock you're getting none. <laughs> uh, so uh, measure your vitamin D level and then get it into the right range. Not too much, not too little, and then stop there. So uh, this is the data showing that, that it has to be just right. What about uh, B, comp B vitamins? So vitamin B uh, complex has a number of vitamins that theoretically could be helpful in memory. So there's a, a substance in the, in the blood called homocysteine. And homocysteine, when you have a high homocysteine level, you have a risk of both Alzheimer's and uh, cardiovascular disease. And you can decrease homocysteine by taking folic acid, B12, and B6, th those three vitamins. It turns out that they've added folic acid to uh, bread. So you guys who are eating bread out there <laughs> are getting enough folic acid now. Uh, they did that um, uh, anyhow, so um, we did a study uh, in people with Alzheimer's disease and we gave them the B complex and we decreased the homocysteine. The trouble was that the homocysteine level didn't start very high because people now have relatively moderate 
homocysteines because they're taking B vitamins, um, either as a multivitamin or in their food. And so uh, we were unable, we, were, we showed that taking B-complex vitamins when you have Alzheimer's disease isn't helpful at all. But it might be good as a prevention. Remember, prevention is, uh, uh, that hasn't been looked at. So taking a B-complex vitamin, which is not cumulative, um, might be helpful from the, the homocysteine point of view. Also, niacin, a, a high niacin level, a low niacin level uh, has been shown to be epidemiologically maybe a risk for dementia. And thiamine is also very important in memory. So a B-complex vitamin uh, might make sense. And physical exercise, so many of the studies, there are lots of studies here, women with higher levels of baseline physical exercise were less likely to develop cognitive decline. Remember, this might be circular. Those who are not exercising might already have uh, beginnings of uh, amyloid deposition in their brain. Here's the nurses study, which is 18,000 people. They keep track of these nurses. Less cognitive de decline in, in the nurses that were more active. And here is the increased cardiorespiratory fitness. Those who are fitter, even Alzheimer patients, have bigger brains. And um, uh, in a study of adults with subjective memory impairment, six-month program of exercise, uh, 18 months later, their memories were better. This is a, a, a prospective single-blind study. You can't do double-blind exercise studies. Patients actually know what they're doing. <laughs> but they can, you can do one group doing aerobic exercise and one group doing toning, stretching, and balancing. And toning, stretching, and balancing is very good because you prevent falls, but aerobic exercise also uh, increases your fitness. And uh, the fitter you are, uh, the better it is uh, for the brain. And here's the very best study. 120 people by Ericsson and company, 60 of them <coughs> did toning, stretching, and balancing. 60 of them did aerobic exercise for a year. And they measured their fitness over time. And these are the results. You can see there's that hippocampus that makes new memories. And it increased in size, increased in size with exercise. Other parts of the brain did not increase in size. So your memory making part of your brain increased in size with exercise. Amazing. And this is the, the how much fitter you got, and that's the change in the hippocampus. The fitter you got, the bigger the hippocampus. So the fitter you are, the bigger, the, the things that you can make parts of your brain get better. Isn't that amazing? And that's with aerobic exercise. So the dosage, how much exercise should you do? 150 minutes of aerobic exercise a week. 150 minutes. And what is that? What is aerobic exercise? You've got to get your pulse about to 100. Make sure your doctor says it's okay. <laughs> okay? Get you, your doctor's blessing. But it's walking. Walking four, four miles an hour, 3.5 to 4 miles an hour at your age. And uh, it also increases uh, um, brain-derived neurotrophic factor in the, in the blood uh, fitness. Not only does fitness uh, or exercise help your brain health, it also helps you live longer. So here are your chromosomes, and at the ends of the chromosomes are these little white dots called telomeres. They are the little hard parts of laces. Your chromosomes unwind when the cell divides. And each time the cell divides, the telomere gets shorter 
till eventually the telomere is so short that the cell can't divide. Well, exercise is an another thing that increases the length of your telomere. Uh, here is the data showing that. So physical activity, light activity, that's the length, moderate activity, heavy activity, and you can see the length of the telomeres increases.